Now, let's understand Theosophy. This is Madame Blavatsky, and she is well known to be Luciferian. And you can understand that it, through her writings. Now, she is, uh, was the founder of Theosophy. You can see the occult uh, uh, symbols that she has here. This is the Ankh, which represents resurrection in the occult. So please, uh, you can see there's counterfeits in this, and I want you to be aware of that. This is the Ouroboros. You see the swastika. You see the hexagram uh, within that, and then you see the crown as well. Now, Madame Blavatsky was a Freemason, and this is her diploma. There is Madame H.P. Blavatsky at the bottom, 33rd degree. Now you see the uh, stork and the uh, phoenix. You see the two pillars now represented as Egyptian obelisks. And so you can see now that they are merging these together, their pillars with uh, uh, Egyptian obelisks and that reverence for Egypt. And so you can understand this. That's her uh, diploma. Lucifer, a theosophical magazine, H.P. Blavatsky. She is a Luciferian. And I want you to understand that. Here's Lucifer again, H.P. Blavatsky. One of her disciples... Uh, was Annie Besant. You can see she's part of co-masonry, the double-headed eagle with crown there, and uh, she now has a 33rd degree album in co-masonry. She puts the, she, this is not the hand to the, to the bosom, but it is the uh, lion's paw or lion's grip, and you'll see that later. This is, I believe, her husband, and her husband, uh, now this is Ledbetter, I'm not sure if this was actually her husband, but uh, this is uh, uh, Ledbetter, one of the uh, popes of Freemasonry. You can see how well adorned he is, and not only is he a Freemason, but he is a looks like either Catholicism or Orthodox, but that is of the same breed uh, in religious uh, uh, religion. Uh, Freemasonry, he uh, and its ancient rites, the author of that and the use of the Eye of Lucifer with illumination around it. So they can look and act. This is a key example of looking and acting like uh, like who they say they aren't. This is his true religion. This is his uh, false religion. But in a sense, this looks like Christianity. It is far from Christianity. Just look at it. I mean, for goodness sake, please understand that this represents does not represent Christianity at all. Moving on, another disciple of Alice Bailey. Uh, um, uh, of Madame Blavatsky, I'm sorry. H.P. Uh, Blavatsky is Alice Bailey. Alice Bailey, you can see on her website, actually she uses the Masonic style A, the A with the square within it. These people have, uh, they channel. And so Madame Blavatsky channeled information from uh, deities or, or spirit beings. I forget the name of her. You can look that up on the internet. But Alice Bailey's channel... Uh, channel information came from this person depiction, and this person depicted is Dwaj, uh, Dwaj Kool. Here he is. This is the, what they referred to in the New Age called Ascended Masters, claiming all of these beings are ascended beings. And look at the similarity of these beings to the depictions of who Jesus was. Interesting how they can imitate that, and these are just artist depictions of that. So it goes to show you whether or not depictions of Jesus are actually real depictions or false depictions. So very interesting uh, what is going on. So these are channeled informations, and channeling is well known in the demonic realm, uh, spiritism, and uh, and mediums, psychics and uh, uh, giving readings this way. Alice Bailey, Consciousness of the Atom. One of her bigger books is Externaliz Externalization of the Hierarchy. And in a nutshell, what they're doing now is exactly implementing this philosophy, which is to externalize the religion onto the public through the use of symbols uh, and ideologies. And we have this throughout. Oh, we can see this in culture. Uh, the spirit of masonry, you'll see that, that externalization in uh, the, some of the uh, case studies we have at the end. Uh, the spirit of masonry, Foster Bailey, her husband. This logo uh, here, uh, and there, well, I don't know really too much about this logo, but uh, moving on into Lucis Trust, and this logo, of course, the sun emanating. Lucis Trust, 
uh, was originally Lucifer Publishing Company. And you can see Lucifer Publishing Company here, uh, founded in 1922. Uh, the, it was changed to uh, Lucis Trust um, because, of course, the obvious reference to Lucifer. They hold a seat. This Lucis Trust holds a seat at the United Nations, and they also disseminate material, literary material, uh, through the United Nations. So big time, these people are, and they are Luciferian. It just so happens that the uh, prayer room at the United Nations has the largest magnet. Uh, so you uh, can see in our, one of our first plates in Freemasonry, a universal magnetism. So they have this largest magnet ever mined. It's actually embedded into the foundation, into the earth, this magnet is. The shape of the prayer room is a truncated pyramid. So you can see in the floor plan, me being an architect, I can uh, tell you that all of this symbolism is done in plan and in design. Uh, and it's not just uh, a coincidence. You see the light, sunlight emanating onto the uh, magnet, and so this oculus uh, being done. This painting itself is a Luciferian painting. I believe there are 72 uh, uh, ge geometric uh, things here. I can't, I haven't counted them, but you can read all about this, this in the Cult of the All-Seeing Eye. Well, I forget whether or not that 72, 72 has correlation there. So we have now new a the New Age magazine, which was original, uh, which has been since changed to uh, the Scottish Rite magazine, and you can see now. But the New Age movement was founded by Freemasonry. Uh, now uh, introductory uh, study course in Theosophy, understanding that they're using this this um, uh, pentagram symbology with man in it. Okay, I do have to make a correction. I'm not sure if this actual uh, Alice Bailey is on her website. I think somebody made that up, but it is the use of the uh, actual Masonic style A. So I'm not sure. Some of this stuff um, I researched a while back. Uh, let's look at what Madame Blavatsky says. The Secret Doctrine by Helena Protrovna Blavatsky. Lucifer represents life, thought, process, Progress, civilization, liberty, independence. Lucifer is the Logos, or God. The serpent, the Savior. See how opposite they are. It is Satan who is God, the God of our planet, and the only God. So uh, you can see now she's developed her doctrine, the celestial version, which thus becomes the mother of gods and devils at one and the same time, for she is the ever-loving benef uh, benefic beneficent deity, uh, but in antiquity and reality, Lucifer is Luciferius, uh, or Luciferius is the name. Lucifer is divine and terrestrial light, the Holy Ghost and Satan at one and the same time. Uh, Freemasonry uh, and co-founder of Publi uh, Lucifer Publishing Com Company, now called Lucis Trust, Foster Bailey concurs, it is not possible from a contemplation of this side of Masonic teaching that it may provide all that is necessary for the formulation of a universal religion. That was in a question. The Spirit of Masonry, page 113. Foster Bailey states that Masonry is the descendant of or is founded upon a divinely imparted religion. This religion, he explains, was the first united world religion then came the era of separation of many religions and sectarianism. Today we are working again toward a world universal religion. Um, in my realm in Christianity, they are working. Uh, the top levels of people, even in the evangelical realm, are working toward globalization, unification, universalism, and this one world govern government. And uh, from my perspective and the biblical perspective, this is called spiritual harlotry, and we want to separate ourselves from that thing. You can believe what you want to believe, but uh, anyway, uh, moving on. One of the most hidden secrets involves the so-called fall of angels. Satan and his rebellious host will thus prove to have become the direct saviors and creators of divine man. Thus Satan, once he ceases to be viewed in the superstitious spirit of the church grows into the grandiose image. It is Satan who is the god of our planet and the only god. Satan or Lucifer represents the centrifugal energy of the universe, this ever-living symbol of self-sacrifice for the intellectual independence of humanity. So Satan is our savior to her. No one will enter the new world order unless he or she will make a pledge to worship Lucifer. No one will enter the new age unless he will take a Luciferian 
Initiation. David Spangler, Director of Planetor, uh, Planetary Initiative, United Nations. They are Universalists. They are Luciferian to the core. Now, on Lucis Trust website, you can understand now when they say the esoteric meaning of Lucifer, it is the opposite. So in this case, we are reading the exoteric meaning of Lucifer, what they are giving you, the uninitiated. There are comments in the world, World Wide Web claiming that Lucifer's Tress was once called Lucifer Tress. Such was never the case. Okay, we just saw the documents. However, for a brief period of two or three years, in the early 1920s, when Alice and Foster Bailey were beginning to publish the books, uh, published under her name, they named their fledgling company, uh, publishing company, Lucifer Publishing Company. There it is. By 1925, the name was changed to Lucis Publishing Company and was new, renamed uh, so ever since. Uh, renamed so ever since. Both Lucifer and Lucis come from the same root word. Lucis meaning, in Latin, generative case, uh, being the Latin generative case meaning of light. So all it really simply means is light. And you can read the rest of this portion. Now moving on to the Great Invocation. Now understanding that invocating uh, in the Satanic Luciferian realm means me uh, invocating uh, spirits, uh, uh, invoking. Uh, and this is now a invoking saying that you can all recite if you like but look at what they want you to do many religions believe in a world teacher or savior knowing him as under such names as the christ lord maitreya imam mahdi the bodhisattva and the messiah and these terms are used in some of the hindu christian hindu muslim buddhist and jewish versions of the great invocation men and women of goodwill throughout the world are using this invocation in their own language will you join them by in using the invocation every day with thought and dedication by using the invocation and encouraging others to use it no particular group or organization is sponsored it belongs to all humanity bringing all humanity to one and the fundamental difference between Jesus Christ as he says it I am the way the truth and the life no man comes to the Father but by me his exclusivity not Maitreya not Mahdi not Bodhisattva and not any other Messiah or any other form of Jesus understanding that fundamental difference and there you have it fundamentalism and what is fundamentalism and what have they portrayed fundamentalism to be is this radical view but is clear in the writings that there is a deception going on on the other side of religion I can show you that and then there is a fundamental difference between Jesus and his religion and all others being the counterfeit and a fundamental difference as being evil and deceptive and secret. So um, I want us to understand now moving on to who these people uh, are in the truth movement. The truth movement, uh, there are two sides of the truth movement, I believe. There is the biblical side to the truth movement and there is the occult side. This man here, Maxwell, Jordan Maxwell, uh, Jordanus Maxwell, that's actually not his real name, but he's made up that name. He is part of the occult truth movement. You can see here he is a Freemason giving a Masonic handshake shake with Zachariah Sitchin. Zachariah Sitchin is no uh, Freemason. You can see him here on the internet in a Masonic lodge covering his face, but that is the same man, and he is the writer of the 12th planet, all this 2012 Nibiru stuff going on and indoctrinating people into these occult alien uh, type uh, things. Aliens are none other than demonic spiritual beings okay we have Jordan Maxwell now this is key to understanding how they do things they expose Freemasonry and tell you that this is a secret society so they expose themselves and they're doing this and understand what they're doing they are going to expose themselves as being corrupt cause wars have people now going against this whole thing and bring in the wars and the chaos and the cry for a new age and so I just want you to understand uh, the psychology behind all this. They'll tell you Freemasonry, but they will not tell you that is a uh, Luciferian doctrine, but they will equate Lu um, Freemasonry with Catholicism. And they'll say, see, look at Christianity. Christianity is the same thing. And they will point at Catholicism as being Christian. And there's the fundamental 
flaw in what they're showing you because Catholicism is not, it's clearly not Christianity. So please understand where that is coming from. These people also uh, claim, and you can understand, you can find this out on the internet for yourself, claim that they've been channeled by demons and that demons have told them to do things similar to these people up above. So he's met uh, several entities that tell him what his purpose in life are uh, and we'll move on. Uh, into these. Now we have the TV shows called The Ancient Aliens. Now on Jordan's website you have Michael Sarian. He is well known to be a Luciferian. You have David Icke who is one of the big names, if not the biggest name in the truth movement, the occult truth movement. David Icke actually tells you that he's the son of God on this interview. And people laugh at him. But he's an older man now and getting gaining really big respect in the truth movement world. Art Bell, you can see you, the use of the Eye of Lucifer. And then you see the friends of Jordan Maxwell and the UFO hunters. They tell you these all these guys are acting on TV and in this club. Within the club, showing you that UFOs could be aliens and those aliens might be life from other planet. I don't know what they're setting you up for, but this uh, is a very... Uh, key aspect to what is going on today the indoctrination of the possibility of aliens aliens uh, planting uh, humanity uh, panspermia it's called and that movie um, Prometheus was uh, an allusion to that and there is Art Bell now moving on to Zeitgeist and this is something that uh, before uh, three years ago that I looked at and said wow you know, it must be that uh, Jesus is the same as everybody else. So well, who do they attack specifically? They tell you two parts truth, and I believe that the economy and everything is, uh, and the money system is all completely corrupted, fractional reserve banking, they tell you. And then they tell you 9-11 uh, was an inside job, and from my perspective, it is. And so I don't know if you guys are even past that. Some of you are not really understanding that. I just urge you to do the research. Don't assume and be told, uh, uh, don't assume what you hear and what they do to you every year to indoctrinate you into believing that 9-11, uh, it's be really become the, the uh, new 4th of July here in the United States. So please uh, go research it for yourself and I can show you that. I cover it very uh, shortly or briefly in the second Part, but look at the symbolism here. The third part of the movie Zeitgeist, this is millions of viewers, 15 million plus, 20 million, probably going on more of, of the views of this movie. Look at the symbolism going on. Single eye, one eye symbolism. In this section here, look, it is what we saw Jay-Z doing, the triangle and the sun or the illumination coming from that triangle. And these are the early initiates. They get the Oh, we're worshiping the sun. No, it's the light, more light, and the intellect. No, more light, it's Lucifer himself, the entity. So uh, please view this video, and show, I'll show you that there is religion being perpetrated uh, through this video. And the one that they are attacking in the third section of, the, of Zeitgeist is specifically Jesus. And so you can see man being God, that God spirit that is in all of us. This is what they're perpetrating as the religion of the new age, when in fact it will be essentially what David Spangler said previously, which is the Luciferian doctrine, worshiping Lucifer. Please don't be deceived. This whole thing is world peace moving toward this one world government. They're going to take you through chaos. You're going to be screaming for peace, and then they're going to enter, you're going to enter in the new the uh, the new age, uh, their new age, according to the Bible, there's only a seven-year plan that Satan has, and it's called the Great Tribulation. Fundamentally, Christians have to understand what the prophecy reads. The book of Revelation is all about that, and this is a deception globally. I understand. It sounds so noble. Humanity coming together. Yeah, we're going to travel through space. Yes, we're going to we're going to uh, uh, hormone therapy and all new change our DNA and become healthy and live long and the whole nine yards. And believe me, it's all a trap. And I just, I know I, I say that, believe me, but just research it for yourself and understand what this is all about fundamentally. It is religion being portrayed and your soul is at stake 
rather than your physical body and the existence of humanity in this case. Now look at Zeitgeist, the use of this Luciferian eye, and look at uh, the Cult of the Serpent. So that similarity of the symbols being used. Now before uh, I became who I became, a born-again Christian, I looked and wanted to be part of this Venus project. I was into ecological architecture. I thought it was the next best thing, this whole green movement. And the Venus project was part of that. This is the architect, Jacques Fresco. I actually contacted the Venus project. Look, they're called the Venus project. And I'm just going to tell you, a lot of the entities are channeled, and they call them uh, Venetians and uh, from Venus and all of that. A deception. This is the fantastic architecture that could be part of humanity in the future. If we just work together, we'll be fully ecological and realize a new dream for humanity. This is Acharya S. She is the main source of Zeitgeist. So Acharya S., look at the books that she promotes. The Christ Conspiracy, the greatest story ever sold, telling you that Christ and Jesus is a selling. They are against it. They are against the Bible. If you actually read the Bible, you will understand that the Bible is quintessentially anti-establishment. It calls the leaders out for who they are. And you are, uh, uh, you're not going to take up arms against them. You're going to be understanding fundamentally that, you're, that Jesus came and died for you. This is the gospel message. And un I know it sounds fantastic, but look who, are, who they are going against. We are peaceful. I don't have own a gun, and I don't intend to ever harm anyone. This is not my uh, uh, belief. And this is what Jesus did, peace and love, just telling you in truth and in love that he wants you for him and that he wants you to take you to heaven and that we're done doing things peacefully. Uh, uh, just just letting you know that's here, the gospel according to Acharya S. Now look at uh, using the gospel message according to Acharya S. And now this dualism, Buddhism type thing. So if you're going to get trapped into this belief system, I'm going to show you that they would rather you be an atheist, a uh, evolutionary atheist, or practice any other religion besides true Christianity. And I want to show that to you uh, in the second half, but we'll continue on in this section.